What is up, YouTube? And welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included, Season 3. And straight into the... Well, the, 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 the plan to relieve the pressure on the oil. You can see there it's overflowing. The oil wells are overflowing and everything's going to overflow. The pressure will build up and eventually break something. This all needs to be turned into petroleum anyway. And the petroleum needs to be stored in the hopes that we can use it for rocket fuel or even some power generation should we need to. I don't know, as always, if you could remember to subscribe if you haven't already, I would appreciate that very much, and make sure you don't miss anything in the future. Basic setup, as always, the the pumps, the, the sorry, the refineries are going to get one pump each, so it's as quick as possible. I'll have to look at the output um, in the actual liquid. Now, each of the refineries is going to get a pump, and an, an out tap, so to speak, and it's just going to drop that petroleum into another basin, similar to what you're looking at now. I could make it a lot cleaner using the water tanks, of course, but sometimes I just like to see visually that we've got a lot of something, so that's what I'm doing. Depending on how quick this is processed, and i.e. it gets rid of the oil, and how quick it builds up, the heat petroleum, I may need to rethink it, but we'll see. Also, it was going to give us a crap ton of refined carbon. Just over at our storage, gas storage, you can see that's working nicely. Majority of the gas is stored there at the minute is, of course, natural gas, hydrogen, and a little bit of polluted oxygen. When the polluted oxygen starts to get out of hand, I will fix that. I think the quickest way is to just pump it into a room. There is the new colour chart that I mentioned in the previous episode of all the new materials we have now and ones that we have in abundance. Anything we don't have in abundance, I'm not put on there to try and give us a better choice. But yeah, for the polluted oxygen, I can chuck it into a room full of the filters and then pump it back out so that we basically get in free uh, clean oxygen. There is a diamond hatch. Remember that I have turned off the smooth hatches now because I no longer need or want them. The ores that we have, I want to continue to stock up on. More specifically, I'm going to look at getting the cobalt from the second asteroid over to use in uh, the, the the building of the, the lower end stuff. Stuff where you use ore and not a refined metal. That's my very basic setup. Ladders are in place to make sure they should be able to get to everything. The ladders on that left-hand side need ripping out at some point. I also need to break the surface as well because we really need to get... Um, now we've got the fuel coming in as a guarantee. We need to uh, look to... Yeah, use it. So to, to use rocket fuel, you need a rocket, right? So I will actually get all of this deconstructed, it looks like. Just not that main line. Really, with all of the plastic we have, it would be a good idea as well to upgrade the permanent ladders for plastic. Steel is quicker. I did actually do a short video to see how much quicker and it is. Steel is significantly quicker than the plastic, but steel is a commodity that we can't afford. Six and a half tons sounds a lot, but it's not. Not when you start using, I think it's 50 kilos per ladder. Is it 50 or five? I think it's 50. Anyway, um, it, it will soon disappear. So you can see there actually the, the, the pressure, I've stopped it from exploding by putting in an air tile, which is letting the gas that's being generated, the natural gas that's being generated, to push out of there to stop the pressure. For now, I will block that off as soon as we get a solution here in terms of using up the oil. But that's why you've got that massive, thick, dark, dense cloud of natural gas. Now, we are collecting all of the gases now that are out around the base, so we will eventually collect that. It's not a problem. And you can see everybody's coming over to crack on getting this built. And with it mostly completed, I just need to get some power in there now to run it all. Um, again, it's going to be a round cap. I've used as much as I can. As you can see, that cable's coming from elsewhere. Uh, but it was too much, so I've just chucked in another transformer. And therefore, then another cable, which they're 
currently building. So it's up and running now, you can see them working away and they are dropping refined carbon. So I'm just going to get a quick and simple sweeper. Um, I can set that one to go through a wall. And that will collect the refined carbon and send that back to base. Again, remember, refined carbon is used to make steel, so that's a commodity that is very valuable. That again is now infinite. We have the poke shells and egg shells giving us lime. We can turn fossil into lime. And I may give that a go. I'm gonna have a look how much fossil I've got because I don't think I use it for anything else. So we could turn fossil into lime. Then all we need is iron, which I think we've got 20-ish tons of iron. Uh, I keep trying to look, but the screen's moving all over the place. But yeah, 32.6 tons of iron, refined iron that is. So yeah, we're good for steel. We just need to get the process up and running. I did try and speed it up and broke it. So I need to just make sure and spend a bit of time with it to make sure it continues to actually do something useful. And by useful, I mean continue to throw out steel and not keep breaking. There we go. Sweepers in. Pumps are working. Refineries are working. Set that through so it will go and pick up them goodies as well. Clear up any crap that it sees. It's very useful to have. But it's there for the refined carbon, as you can see. Every so often you see it drop. 50 kilos of refined carbon. It picks it up and sends it to base. Now all we need to do is how fast is that filling? It's filling up pretty quick. Four refineries running full bore is no joke. Loss of power there, though. The question is why. I'm not sure. That is very bright. I think they'd have sun, sun, sunglasses to do stuff like that. Oh yeah, we lost power there, but I'm not too worried because we can see that it's running. So it must be from the coal generators running now. And I know that we are generating more power. We are generating, there we go, enough to um, keep the place going. Back up now, again of the sewage. I seem to have accidentally damaged the pipe. Also, there's oil in my sewage line. Not entirely sure how I got them wires crossed. But there are filters in place anyway. So we know that the crap water comes along here. Because the last place it goes is through the pit uh, chamber. The pit branch. To water the, the, the crops that they eat. Then it can go into that main line. Now really I should separate that. And I'm pretty sure I do shortly or in the future. Um, because that line that's going past that's just oil at the minute is the one draining the bottom of the map. And there's a lot of water going to be down there that needs collecting. So I would suggest that we um, do two lines. Because we don't want the sewage line to back up. Because if the sewage line backs up, all of the toilets, sinks and showers stop working. And then they start peeing all over your floor. It's not, it's not nice. So down at the bottom where I had the original... Gas storage separator type schnitzel. I am ripping all of that out. Ripping it out for the process. So this whole section here you can see, including the the floor that they're currently using. So I will rip that out as well. But this whole section is going to become, hopefully anyway, my uh, air conditioning room. Boiler room, whatever you want to call it. It's air conditioning. So what I'd like to do is chuck... In this area, just fill it full of the generators, the electrostatic generators, and then have a cooling loop that goes around each side of the base. Will have their own side, as I've mentioned previously. It will go around there, cool the water down, and then go up into the base. Now, it will go to each of the levels in insulated pipes, so it's not cooling down unless I want it to. We then use radiant pipes going through each of the rooms and set some sort of automation through a thermometer and a liquid shutoff valve I think they're called and the idea is each of the rooms if it gets below x and x being the temperature we set on the air conditioning the thermometer it will then pass through the cooled 10 degree water through that room and cool it down at the minute, the base is getting very orange. That liquid there at the bottom where all our water is stored is orange. All of this needs to be cooled down. So I need to build roughly a crap ton of these. I'm just going to go until I fill it. 
I want to keep it reasonably symmetrical because they aren't going to shear. So the loops of plumbing that will be the coolant loops, there will be a left-hand side and a right-hand side totally separate. I don't know why. I just want to do it like that. And then each floor will have its own line and thermometer as well. So it should be quite good for managing in the future. Don't know what I'm doing here. I'm trying to make it look symmetrical, of course, but you can't. So there's seven there on that side, and there is seven on that side. So technically, there's an equal amount. It is symmetrical, just not on the build. So what I need to do is give one to each side extra, and that will be 15 per. Now, these are not going to need a lot of power to run them, remember, because they create power. So just connecting them into the grid is what you need to do. Connecting them to the just a cable will make them work, but connecting them to the grid will mean that any power that we generate from the heat of the base, i.e. from cooling down the base, will give us free power. Now, this is the simplest part. The most difficult part is wiring in, or sorry, plumbing in all of the floors. You can see there is a lot of yellow, orange, and red in our base, and that is no good. We do not want that. This cooling system now is cooling the oxygen down. So we have oxygen going into the base that is pre-cooled. That's good. We now need to get the oxygen in the base that's already there and all of the walls, floors, tools, etc. cooled down also. I'm just going to add to the cooling loop here and cool down this part as well just because... Well, two reasons. One is it's just nicer to see it working, but also... It's additional power. Any heat that we're generating just gives us free power. With the left-hand side cleared out, we are now going to rip out the flooring for the right-hand side. I don't know why I said right-hand side. For the bottom is what I meant to say. So setting up the scaffolding at the minute. They can get to this whenever they can, I hope. Anybody that's got nothing else to do should be digging, and that is all that is required. I am not going along the bottom all the way to the right-hand side, because I haven't actually got to the edge there yet. I am just taking it to where I've got to. Then the floor and then to the right-hand side will be done on the next stage. I'll likely leave the top, the crust, shall we say, of the asteroid alone for a while, because that's what's blocking off uh, the vacuum of space. But there's going to be a lot of resources in here. Also, a lot of this resource that's going to be collected is going to be very, very warm. This area biome that we're currently in is sort of 80 to 90 degrees. This one is negative 50. Uh, and then it's 100 degrees, uh, 90 degrees again. So we are going to have to think of a way of collecting all of this, getting it into the base, but not allowing it to cause too much differential in terms of heat. Remember, this is kind of, the, although it's the lab map, which is fantastic, um, it's become a how to beat the heat. Uh, someone commented as well, uh, hydrogen generators all the way forward with that too. So all of this ice will eventually become water, whether it be polluted, brine, salt, or clean, and then that will eventually become, well, it'll either go into the drinking water recycle process or it'll get turned into oxygen and hydrogen. So digging out all of this, the good thing is the neurodinium stuff at the bottom that I always say wrong will automatically get cleared off. As you can see, you can't dig that, so it doesn't matter. So you can see that is the bottom of the map. That is where we're going to get to, and that is our next large goal. So we cleared out the left-hand side up to the abyssalite for the magma. That was intentional. I'm not opening that can of worms of all of that. That is a lot of magma. If I need a lot of heat for something, great, but I don't think that's going to do it. It's a shame there isn't that sort of, on the opposite side, maybe there's a cold version, because I could do with something really useful to cool down my hydrogen uh, to, to, to go into the cryo uh, fuels. So get the hydrogen gas into a liquid, because that is the end game fuel type for the rockets that is broken good. Okay, so the base cooling is in. It's not running yet, but it is in as best I can. You can see the radiant pipes down at the bottom there to get all of the heat transferred to the generators. Then up each of the side. 
There is the insulator. The purple pipe, remember, is insulated, and that is specifically to stop the cold or heat get into places I don't want it. So it goes up the left-hand side for the left-hand side and then down the center. And then the right-hand side, it goes up the far right-hand side and down the center. So them two pipes there in this going down the very center of the base are specifically for the return of all of the cooling. Now, I've just connected our main water supply, as you can see, to it. And I'm doing that to both sides. Remember, they are totally separate. I did that on purpose. This is going to take a bit of a while because we need to fill up 95 to 99% of the entirety of this. So it's going to use a lot of water. But when it... And you're going to see that water now. Look, you see the green? That is the temper, That is the heat coming out of the water that was stored in that orange area anyway. So we're already pre-cooling it to get it around. As soon as it's full, though, it will be infinite. And it will just keep going round and round and round. Cooling down at the bottom, taking any heat from the base where it lies. You can see our mushroom farms the three mushroom farms are all out because they are too warm so it's a perfect example of why we need to start cooling things down the thermometers are in and the automation wire are in as well i just need to get the power cables to the shut off valves as you can see they are scattered a little bit about because unfortunately some of the rooms didn't allow me to put them right at the far left and i'm not going to rip up the rooms to do so the right hand side as well the automation side has been done there's just no power lines so i can go through and get them added now even with the temperature set they won't work of course unless they're powered so we need to do that now my first test is going to be the farms because we need to get the food back up and running we still have four and a half million calories of food so i'm not worried about ever going we're never going to starve um, but you forget about these things eventually it will bite you on the backside you can see now on that far left hand side that purple pipe it is event it is finally going to process we still need a crap load more water in the system for it to work but you can see it's going up to the shut off valves there and stopping that's now waiting for the shut off valve to open and allow it through and all of the thermometers currently are red which means that yes the temperature is met not sure if I showed that actually, but there was a we have found because I've dug out that right hand side now, um, and the copper uh, we found a copper volcano which is huge because yeah, like I said, we we want to stop wasting ores, and I'm not sure how much copper ore is left on this map, but we don't want to use it. So that copper volcano there, the ancient specimen is the thing that gives you infinite uh, fossil, and then this thing. Copper Volcano, we can get that surveyed and moved over to... And I've never actually seen it show it before. That was weird. If you go on Move 2 now, you can actually see the item that you're moving and it shows where it's going to go. Now, I don't know why. Don't ask me. I brain farted and moved it into the wrong room. This is the liquids room, not the metals room. So, there's that. Luckily, it didn't take me too long to realise and move it down. So, we have... One iron volcano, two gold volcanoes, and one copper volcano so far. So that is infinite of them three metals, refined metals. We'll get them forever and ever and ever. We will have to process them, and all it requires really is cooling them down. Cooling down the molten metal into a solid metal and using it where we need. The iron is the one I worry about the most because I use it a lot for building because of its uh, capability of withstanding heat. 50 degrees... Copper, obviously, is terrible for that. Uh, but also, we need it for the steel as well. Now, we already have a problem. In the very short time I was doing the cooling system for the base, the petroleum has filled up. I have it going into tanks. Those tanks, then, the idea is to get it stored properly. And then this will eventually be piped up to the rocket bay, wherever that may be in the future. But clearly I need more, so what I'm going to do is do that and build more. I'm likely going to go for another whole row or maybe even three rows. But it won't speed it up unless you actually add another pump as well. The pump is maxed out, that pump that's in there. So you need to have multiple pumps uh, in order to make it do any faster. It do any faster, that was terrible English, but yeah. For it to work any faster. So we'll get a second one of those in as well, and that second one will pump into that second line. See how that goes? If that fails, we will, of course, 
reset and go for a third. Yes, I got a crash there. I'm not sure why. This is only the second one I've had, though. And reloading the game uh, just carries on. So it's not like a proper bug to worry about with the mods. Uh, I looked at the, the, the data and it had a glitch for an item being picked up. Um, reloading the game. Went back a little bit. <clears throat> but I've got you back to where we were anyway. So you can see that the, the that bottom mushroom farm is working. The temperature is obviously cooling. The, the, the water is going through there. And the automated thermometer is set to green to say continue. Set it about 28 degrees, I think, which is significant. I think they stop growing at 30. You can see there, it's definitely working. That water then goes to the right-hand side, to the center column, straight back into the cooling loop and reused once again. And that's all it's going to do. Now, it's going to be quite busy for the first couple of cycles because there's a lot of cooling to do and not maybe enough water to do all of the rooms. But after a few cycles, you'll find that it will settle itself down and just uh, work sort of very efficiently and, and very well. I have thrown in a cooling loop for this water room to make sure that this room doesn't get too hot. Regardless of where we pull the water in from, I want to be able to get it cooled down as soon as possible. And you can see there's a lot of heat generated here. So I will turn that right down to a nice cool temperature. And the idea is that the room will stay cool, but also the actual storage vessels will cool down and cool all of the water in them, though it will take a very, very long time. On that basis, I'm also putting in some of the temp shift plates to help really get that heat out of them storage units. You can see the units themselves are orange. So it will help pull that heat out of those and cool them down, allowing for the liquid inside to cool a bit quicker. And you can see that's working immediately because the, the orange and yellow temperatures will float to the top there. And a few seconds later, you can see everything is cooling down nicely, including that room. Just need to go around now and make sure all of the thermostats are set. Some rooms might be need to turn up or down depending on what they are, how you want them to be. Uh, farms especially will be need to will need to be more specific because certain crops need certain temperatures But for now I can go down. I think 28 ish degrees is enough to do all of them and see how we go from there We'll give the we'll give the base now a couple of cycles to sort itself out and see what we need to tweak in the future We are at time now though or past it should I say so thank you very much for watching if you like the video Please click like any comments are welcome as always subscribe for more take care Goodbye.